Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture on machine learning regression metrics. If you guys remember in the previous lecture we have been able to kickstart our training so we created our own data set and then we essentially started our training using O2ML and the training is running right now in the background and it's taking around one hour approximately for it to complete. Okay so in the meantime what I wanted to cover right now is I wanted to cover the basic metrics that we use to assess a machine learning regression model. So after the model is trained, what I wanted to do is I wanted to see how good that machine learning model is. So if you guys remember is that here we have our GRE score and here we have our chances of admission listed on the Y axis. And here I have my data points, if you guys remember. And all what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to come up with this simply straight line. That straight line will tell me, this is my model. I have a slope, which is M. I have Y intercept, which is B. And I ended up with this line here. And the question is, how good that model is? Well, so what we do is that we calculate what we call it the residuals. And simply the residuals is the vertical distance between what the model predicted, what the model came up with, and what the actual true points are. So please note that these circles here, these are the actual values. That's the training data, right? This is the X and Y coordinates that came from the field. These are facts. And we call this YI, okay, where I could take any number between 0, 1, 2, 3, and so on, indicating that this is Y1, y2, y3, and so on. And we call this actual because these are the actual values or true values or the ground truth, essentially. Any point that lies here on this line, this is the estimated or predicted value. So for example, given that GRE score here, the model predicted this point here, right? The model predicted that chances of admission might be, let's say, 0.7, for example. And that's why we call this y hat. And y hat indicate that this is a prediction or an estimate. However, the actual true value, the actual true y was maybe 0.8, for example. And that's why what we do is that we calculate what we call the residuals or the errors. This is simply the difference between what the model is predicting, which is y hat minus the ground truth minus the actual value, which is yi, okay? All right, and then the question is, okay, what I'm gonna do with it? So now I ended up with a bunch of residuals. I have residual here for this point. I have another error here as well for this point too. I have another error, another error, another error, for example. The question is, what I'm gonna do with it? And that's what I'm gonna do in the next slide here. So the first calculation that we can do is what we call it the mean absolute error or MAE. And this is the equation to calculate the mean absolute error. And please note that in this course, we are not gonna be doing any coding. So essentially all these metrics will be generated for you automatically. So you don't need to worry about how they are calculated behind the scenes. The intent of this lecture is just to give you an idea of what do they mean? Just kind of the intuition from a very high level. And simply the mean absolute error is obtained by calculating the absolute difference between the model predictions and the true actual values. So for every single data point that I have in here, I'm going to calculate the residuals, but I'm going to add, calculate the absolute value. And this is the absolute value for all the data points. And then I'm going to sum up all these values and divide by the overall number of samples, which is N. And that will give me the MAE. And the mean absolute error simply is a measure of the average magnitude of error generated by the regression model. Kind of give you an average value, approximately how good that model is. And these are the different steps. We calculate the residuals at every point, And then we calculate the absolute value. Basically, we get rid of the sign. So what you guys see here is you calculate the difference and then you remove the sign. So if it's negative, it becomes positive. That's the absolute term. You sum up all these values here. So all these values, you sum them up, and then you divide by n, which is the overall number of uh, residuals or samples. 
and that's it. If the mean absolute error is zero, that means or indicates that the model predictions are perfect. That means all the data points here lie on the line, indicating that there is no error, essentially. Okay, the second metric that I wanted to cover is known as the mean squared error, or MSE. It's actually quite similar to the MAE, or mean absolute error, but instead of using absolute values, I'm going to use the square of the difference between the model predictions and the training data set. And this is the equation, exactly the same as before, but instead of the absolute values, I was just going to square up the residuals. So think about it. All what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to remove the sign. Okay, so I can remove the sign by either obtaining the absolute value or by squaring. If you square here any value, you will essentially is going to get rid of the sign. The number at the end will be positive, right? Okay, another key point as well that it's very important when it comes to the mean squared error, because we are squaring up the error, that means the value for the mean squared error will generally be much higher compared to the mean absolute error because you are squaring it. You are kind of magnifying it. And what you guys notice as well is that the error increases here in a quadratic fashion, while the error increases in a proportional fashion if you use the mean absolute error. And um, again, the, uh, here are the steps. We calculate the residual for every data point. And then we calculate the square value of the residual. And then finally, we calculate the average of the results from step two. We sum them up and we divide by the overall number of samples. One important point as well is that since we are squaring the error, any prediction error will be heavily penalized. Again, the error will be much bigger because you are, if the error is very small, for example, you square it up and now it becomes much, much bigger in a quadratic fashion. And that's why mean square error will be generally much higher compared to the mean absolute error. Okay, what about the next metric, which is RMSE, or root mean square error? Well, what we do is we obtain the previous metric, which is mean squared error, and then we obtain the square root of that. Essentially, you take the error, you take the residuals, you square it up, you obtain the average, and then you obtain the square root of it back. And what's super powerful about root mean square error is that it could be easily interpreted because in case of the MSE before here, we have done squaring, right? So the units of the output is different compared to the units of the original data set. However, here, because I obtained the square root back again, the units will match the units of the output, okay? So you can easily interpret the error with the RMSE. And RMSE provides an estimate of how large the residuals are being dispersed as well. And here are the steps. We calculate the residual for every data point. We calculate the square value of the residual. So you calculate the error here, the residual. You square that up. And then you calculate the average of the square residuals. You sum them up. You divide by the overall number of samples. And then you obtain the square root of that equation. And that's it. That will give you the RMSE, or root mean squared error. Okay, finally, what we got here is what we call it the coefficient of determination, or R squared. So R squared, or the coefficient of determination, represents the proportion of variance of the output of Y that has been explained by the independent variables in the model, which is X. So let's assume that we are developing a machine learning regression model. And here we have our GRE score on the x-axis. And here I have the chances of admission. What we wanted to do is that we wanted to see or calculate what we call it R square or the coefficient of determination. And that essentially will tell you how much change in the output, how much change in the chances of admission has been described by the changes in the input which is in this, in this example in the GRE score. And this simply R square is a number that range between zero and one. So if you have a number one, that would be the best possible score, meaning that the output here is perfectly explained by the changes in the input, like 100%. What if I have maybe R square equals to 0.8? Well, that means that 80% 
of the increase in the university admission score here in the chances of admission has been explained by the GRE score, which is by the independent variable X. And what's super powerful as well about R square or the coefficient of determination, it can give you an indication of the goodness of the fit. And therefore, it provides you a good measure of how well unseen samples are likely to be predicted by the model. And if we have a model, for example, that has a constant output, basically the output does not change based on the independent variable x, well, if you have that kind of model, r square will be equals to zero, meaning, well, no matter how much I change GRE score, the output is fixed, the output is constant, it does not change, meaning that there is no the, the, the change in the variance in the output is not dependent on the input. And that's when you have basically a useless regression model. And that's when you have an R square of equals to zero. What we try to do, of course, to aspire for is to come up with a coefficient of determination as close to one as possible. And that's one of the key metrics that we're going to use once our model is trained in our example here. Okay. All right. So these are the key metrics that I want you guys to uh, understand uh, before we move forward to our part three of our demo. And in the next lecture, we'll go ahead and get started with our model assessment and deployment. So please stay tuned, best of luck, and I will see you guys in the next lecture.